Hey Math 31, I had a question coming out of section 6.8, number 13. And here we were given a logarithmic model and asked to set this logarithmic model equal to 62. So I'm going to take my logarithmic model here, right, and you can see it, boom, and I'm going to set it equal to 62. All right, so the goal with any of these, right, if I want to solve for P, that's what I want to solve for, that means I need to isolate the logarithmic term. Oops, that's not quite how you spell logarithmic. There we go. All right, so I'm going to isolate the logarithmic term, which means I'm going to subtract the 67 number to the other side, and then I'm ultimately going to divide by negative 5.72. So that's what you see me doing in these first couple of steps, and I finally arrive at the natural log is equal to this, this funky decimal. And I save all of my decimal places when I go through these log and exponent problems because the sooner you round off, the less accurate your answer is going to be at the end. So I actually save all of my decimals as I go through this until the very end when I round my answer. All right, so if you have a logarithm and you want to get to that variable, right, I want to get to the argument, I need to turn that into an exponential equation. So the idea here is if we thought about, hey, if x is equal to y, then e to the x would equal e to the y, right? So if this is my x and this is my y, right, then e to the x would equal e to the y. And that's where that next part of the equation is coming from. But as we've talked about with e's and ln's or any powers and logs, when the base of your power and the base of your logarithm are the same, in this case, the argument is all that survives. So I get my p value there and I rounded it to two decimal places. All right. Thanks so much. Bye.